Tonight, Netflix stands up to Comcast, AT&T takes on Google Fiber, and the FAA opens a drone testing site. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 70 for Monday, April 21st, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox, where you can get great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine, get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like chili lime pistachios. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed, shall we? Today, Netflix officially took a stance against the proposed $45 billion merger of Comcast and Time Warner Cable. In a letter to shareholders, the company said a combined Comcast and Time Warner would, quote, possess even more anti-competitive leverage to charge arbitrary interconnection tolls for access to their customers. Netflix notes that cable internet is the default broadband technology for most Americans and says if the merger is approved, many Americans American households would have Comcast as the only option for truly high-speed broadband that offers service of 10 megabits per second or higher. In other Netflix news, the company's latest earnings report shows strong growth, 86 cents a share on $1.27 billion in revenue. The company also surpassed 35 million streaming subscribers. CEO Reed Hastings pointed to healthy international growth with 1.75 million new international subscribers during the quarter and said the company is on a path to achieve profitability this year from its international ventures, though European expansion and new content and marketing investments will keep the unit at a net loss. Netflix also said it will raise prices for new members by one or two dollars sometime this quarter, but that, quote, existing members would stay at the current pricing, like $7.99 in the U.S., for a generous time period. AT&T has announced a proposal to add 21 more cities to its fiber optic internet service, Gigapower, after launching in Austin, Texas last December. If approved by local officials, markets like San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Atlanta could receive speeds up to one gigabit per second, 100 times faster than standard internet services, including AT&T's own Uverse service. This will put AT&T in direct competition with Google's fiber internet service, already in Kansas City, Missouri, Provo, Utah, and Austin, Texas. Why does Austin get all the good stuff? Google also announced 34 new cities for consideration for its lineup this past February. Google's messaging app will now merge SMS and Hangouts conversations. Users can pick between Hangouts and SMS when sending a given message, but there isn't an option to use Hangouts with SMS as a backup the way Apple does with iMessage. However, the company says that different message types will be easy to tell apart in the conversation. Users that don't like the merged view can revert back to the old style to keep things separate. The Wall Street Journal is reporting sources that say Apple and Google are competing for exclusivity for top-tier game titles by offering premium placement on their App Store's homepages and feature lists. For example, last August, for the launch of Plants vs. Zombies 2, Electronic Arts reportedly struck a deal with Apple, which promoted the game prominently in its App Store, and in exchange, EA reportedly agreed to give Apple about a two-month window of exclusivity for the title. Reportedly. Coming up, browser extensions that can detect heart bleed on websites you visit. And up next, I'll chat with TechCrunch's Alex Wilhelm about the FAA's new drone testing facilities. But first, let's talk about food. When it comes around time to do TN2 every day, I'm usually really starving. And when you get hungry, you get cranky, you get lightheaded, you're not at your best, and then you just want to eat whatever. Don't do that. Keep your eye on looking good and feeling great and head on over to naturebox.com slash twit. Click the continue button and then you get to choose between three subscription options. Then you go ahead and place your order based on what you want to eat. When you're a member, you can select the types of snacks that you want in each monthly box that gets delivered to you. Dietary needs are all considered vegan, gluten conscious, nut free, all that stuff. Non-GMO, you can also select by taste. Sweet, spicy, maybe you're a savory person. Nature Box sends great tasting snacks right to your door, free shipping anywhere in the US. And these are healthy, satisfying snacks. French toast granola, 
I love that one. Over 100 different flavors, all with zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial ever. Nature Box is the snack happy gift that keeps on giving. Three, six, or 12 month subscription sent to somebody you love, someone special, family or friend, or even your office. Time to snack smarter. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like honey mesquite almonds. Remember, get 50% off your first box by going to naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank Naturebox for their support of Tech News tonight. All right, joining me now is Alex Wilhelm, a tech reporter over at TechCrunch. Hey, Alex. Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's going well. Thanks for being here. Of course. All right, let's talk about the FAA and this drone test site that they've set up. What's going on here? Well, apparently North Dakota is the new happening spot for drones. Uh, I didn't <laughs> know that was going to be the case. So essentially, the FAA is going to be rolling out, I think, five or six total drone test sites around the country. And the idea here is to get a lot of data and figure out what a good regulatory structure for drones will be in the United States. Because um, right now, there isn't really kind of a legal structure out there for people to use these drones commercially. And so we need that as, you know, as a country. We can't have drones flying in commercial flight patterns, for example. Um, but I will say there's some people out there that are not happy that we don't have this in place, and so they can't use drones the way they want to. There's a new lawsuit out today um, that's challenging the FAA's authority to kind of curtail drone usage. But think of this as the first step of you know, many. Why North Dakota specifically? Is it population? Is it uh, the, the terrain? Is it both? It's dirt, turns out. Um, they're going to be out there doing uh, like soil watching for crops. Um, yeah, I don't really know much about farming. <laughs> Soil watching. Yeah, I, mean, I thought dirt, dirt doesn't move. Why do you need drones? <laughs> um, but uh, that's that's what they said. But again, this is going to be a test that will also have data that will feed into the larger drone program. Uh, so it's not just dirt testing. It's, um, you know, how do drones fit into a commercial uh, airspace environment? So the FAA is saying that these sites are important for safety. How are they going to be testing these drones to be able to determine that? Well, I mean, I think if you do this in a limited fashion for a while, you figure out what the problems are. So you'll figure out if drones in a commercial setting will have problems with, you know, a local small airport, with, you know, single engine airplanes, with, I don't know, uh, radio interference or, you know, noise in uh, populated areas. You have to just go out there and run them around for a while and watch and look and learn to figure out what you need to put in place in terms of laws. So, you know, they're going to be doing this around the country over the next couple of years. We're supposed to have laws in place by 2015, but that feels a little optimistic to me. Um, but uh, we need to fly them around and see what happens. And so North Dakota is the first step, and then there'll be four or five other, other sites around the country, and we'll see what happens. You know, I was at uh, I was at Coachella a couple weekends ago, and oh, there were God. drones flying over the crowds, and I remember thinking, is that legal? Are people allowed to do this? Uh, any insight into how laws might look once the FAA gets some data and, and decides to go ahead with a plan? Well, hopefully they'll be intelligent and not too restrictive. I think that everyone kind of agrees that drone technology is going to be uh, a next big thing whenever they get kind of get the stuff put together. Um, as you recall, Amazon had that ridiculous video about using drones to deliver packages and so, so forth. But I think really in the end we'll see kind of moderate but ramping usage of drones. And so provided that the laws will allow people to not get into trouble and still have space to be creative, that'll be good enough. But this is the government, so don't get your hopes up you know, too high. All right, Alex Wilhelm, thank you so much for joining us to talk a little bit more about what we should expect with the FAA and their little drone project in North Dakota. Thanks for having me. Uh, let folks know where they can get a hold of you online and read more of your work. Uh, I write for TechCrunch, and I'm on Twitter at Alex. Beautiful. Thanks, Alex. Peace. All right, finally, if you're worried about heart bleed, and you should be, the open SSL bug isn't exactly being stopped, but it can be monitored with a browser extension called Chrome Bleed. It tells you whether any website that you're viewing is susceptible to the vulnerability. Now, if you don't use Chrome, because Chrome Bleed is just for the Chrome browser, Netcraft, which is a UK-based internet security firm, has created its own self-titled extension, and if there's a threat present, the Netcraft icon will have a little warning triangle over it in your browser tray works a lot of different browsers besides chrome netcraft will also protect you from other dangers as well like phishing attacks stay smart out there everybody and that's it for this edition of tech news tonight subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2 write us at tn2 at twit.tv and don't miss our morning news program tech news today tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m pacific 1 p.m eastern i'm sarah lane thanks for watching bandwidth for tech news tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com